I wanted to go a little bit deeper though into again this what what might be the attractive if I may use that word quality that people are some people are moving in this direction and raise the issue of the the ethno nationalist agenda here right this is again thinking about what's in common of this rise of a liberalism let's face it this is these are ethnic claims right there's a there's something there so you know, maybe if you could each elaborate a little bit of how it looks from where you are, whether it's Hindu nationalism and so on, um, the Hungarian nationalism um, in Brazil, I'm curious how this bounced. So maybe Oscar, I'll start with you, we'll go back around. Um, the, this sort of ethno-nationalist component and how important you see that as a sort of driver of what, of what we're seeing right now. Yes, I think that the, the nationalist uh, uh, old card uh, that help populist uh, leaders to establish common enemies is, is, is something that we, we understand. Yes, Bolsonaro comes from the military, which are uh, those who, who breed nationalism in Brazil. He's a former military. He played the card of nationalism against uh, mostly uh, what he calls a globalism which is a mix uh, of, of strange ideas, but basically that claims that Brazil lost its sovereignty for those who have liberal ideas in terms of human rights. So he has a strong discourse against uh, uh, human rights and the environmental uh, in, in the, the idea that Brazil is always under threat of the environmental movement that wants to retract from Brazil uh, the sovereignty over the, the forest. So the nationalist key here is not against immigration because we don't have any particular wave of Im immigrations arriving in Brazil, but the, the nationalist uh, uh, key is play against the environmentalist concerns of the globe regarding the Amazon. And that's how he mobilized Brazilian society against uh, international perception on, and criticism on, on, on environmentalism. So this is how it, it, it is real. And also there is an anti-communist, which is very awkward uh, 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 discourse made by the military that uh, Bolsonaro incorporated. So who are the communists? Communists are everyone that is uh, not anti-communist. So uh, the economist is uh, that, just made a, a nice report on a bet, uh, nice in, in, in terms of qu quality of the report about Brazil, is uh, 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 blamed as a communist uh, 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 journal. So this is the perception, how we play the nationalist uh, uh, role here. Great, thank you. Um, Gabor. Let me, let me go back a little bit before sure. I go to, to your, your uh, immediate question about nationalism go back into the recent history of, of Hungary, namely what, what moved uh, people into the hands of, of this autocratic populist like, like Viktor Orban. So you have to understand the, the very recent history of the democratic transition from uh, 1989, 1990. Uh, when one of the one of the the main issues of the transition was to to live better than than in the communist times, uh, certainly this was the main motivation of the people to change the system beyond uh, the pursuit of of democracy uh, and freedom. And what was a disappointment after? after about 20, 25 years of, of democratic uh, transition was that, that this living better uh, approach still did not uh, work. Uh, uh, income inequality was still very high and people just wanted to get rid of this kind of neoliberal uh, economic policy of the dead time government, uh, the previous uh, socialist liberal uh, governments. So this made uh, a, a call uh, of, of the populist Orban government 
uh, for more new uh, economic policy uh, very attractive. But I have to say that in the last years, e economic in inequality uh, raised uh, had, has been raised even more than, than before. And somehow to, to hide this, this fact of, of inequality, uh, the Orban government very much uses a nationalist idea and a nationalist approach. You have to know that the Hungarian uh, uh, population is a very homogeneous population uh, with, without really migrants or, or foreigners uh, in, in the country. So that is why this kind of nationalist anti-migration agenda was very attractive and ever since is very attractive, even though we do not have any migrants in the, in the country whatsoever. Hmm. Amazing. Verna, to the nationalist question. Yeah. yeah, so this is, I mean, actually really directly related to Kabbalah. It's interesting, right? Hungary is this relatively white Christian homogeneous country. India is, of course, exactly the opposite. Um, on almost all indicators, it's one of the most ethnically diverse countries in the world. And so I think the question becomes, you know, it's interesting that you see uh, the rise of the same beast, which is an exclusionary nationalism in which the nation begins to stand in for the dominant ethnic group, whether that's white Christians in Hungary or, you know, in Hindus in, in India. And you see that, you know, this is happening under very, very different demographic conditions. Um, and so the one thing that I wanted to relate is very interesting for me to hear um, Oscar describing the nature of the nationalism and the ethno nationalism in Brazil. And so, you know, to me, the climate politics of the Amazon, the anti communism, that's really interesting because, in some ways, uh, while I would say that all three regimes are characterized by this right-leaning, exclusionary nationalism, populism, the one difference is that I would say that those two domains are not the relevant ones in India. So in India, it's very much this idea that the ethno-nationalism that we talk about is really religious nationalism. It's Hindu nationalism. And so to me, the kind of perhaps, you know, a country that we're not explicitly talking about, but which is obviously framing our discussion is to me, it's perhaps most analogous to, to white supremacy um, in the US. And I think just, you know, just as white supremacy and Trump need to be put into historic perspective, the one thing that I will say is that the BJP in a way represents uh, the high tide of a strand of exclusionary Hindu nationalism that has existed since the very time of the foundation of India. So I began my comments by saying that, you know, India was established as this puzzle. It's always called the puzzle of Indian democracy under these very hostile uh, conditions that are not seen as fertile to the institution of democratic, to the institution of democracy. And yet at its very founding, it also faced this really important uh, ethno-nationalist strand. So remember, India was partitioned uh, by the departing British on religious lines. Pakistan was created explicitly as a state for Muslims. And so India had to resist that default categorization, which it did by enacting this highly inclusive constitution of being a country for the Hindus. And so Nehru and Gandhi and a lot of the founding fathers went to great extents uh, to talk about how India was not just a country of Hindus, and it had this constitutional um, and ideological commitment to the diversity that exists today. And to me, you know, Oscar's point about how uh, Bolsonaro comes from the military, to me, the India-Pakistan contrast uh, is also very interesting because you know similar histories, and yet Pakistan, in some ways, follows the trajectory of Brazil a little bit more in terms of its oscillation from in military coups and you know the, the importance of the military that in Indian democracy, India has managed to keep the military in its barracks. It has not yet had a military coup of the same kind, but the, the nature of the ethno-nationalism really has its roots in what killed Gandhi. So Gandhi was assassinated shortly after India's independence. He was assassinated by someone called Nathuram Godse, who was a member of the same organization that really underpins the power and success of the BJP, the 
the party, Janta Party, of which uh, Modi is the leader and you know is the representative. And so, in some ways, uh, this is one particular kind of ethno nationalism, which is a religiously exclusionary nationalism that that basically places Muslims either beyond or at least in a second class place relative to Hindus. But it's in a way the BJP's rise is unprecedented in terms of this high tide of nationalism, but the ideology and the organization is not. <laughs> 